I've created an enemy AI here and it's surrounding the player in a circle and then going in to attack the player. All the assets and code will be linked in the description below and I hope you enjoy the video. So I'm going to assume you have your player and the world set up and let's create the enemy. So first you want to create a kinematic body, a collision shape and a sprite. Here I'm going to import my sprite texture and we're going to also add a new rectangle shape 2D. Add a new script to the kinematic body. Create a speed and velocity variable. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make it so it follows the player. To do this, we're going to use a state machine. A state machine provides different states that the enemy will go into. To do this, write enum. I've created three different states, surround, attack, and hit. Surround will make the enemy surround the player in a circle. Attack will make the enemy go towards the player. And hit will make the enemy try and hit the player with its sword. Then we're going to create a state variable, which will change depending on what the state is. To make this easier, we're going to create a function called move, and we're going to have a target as its parameter. Here we have some basic code that will move the enemy towards a target and also add some steering, which will make it more natural. Create a physics process function, write match state. Whenever the state is equal to the surround, it's going to play what's ever in here. Right now we have move, and we need a target, which should be the player. We're going to create a new variable called player. And in our world where we're instancing it randomly, we're going to set the player variable to the player variable up here, which you can see is just an exported thing where I can select the player. Now obviously with surround, we want the enemy to surround the player in an invisible circle. So we're going to add that right now. So let's just get rid of this for now. And we're going to create a new function that will pick a random spot in an invisible circle around the player. So we create a new function called get circle position and we're going to add random as a parameter. This is essentially getting the player's global position doing a whole bunch of math to make a circle around it. I don't know how it works it's just math I got it off some form so thank you to that guy. The one that you want to change is radius which will change how big the circle is. This will return the random position on the circle create a ready function which will start when the enemy first loads in we're going to create a new number generator which generates random numbers and we're going to create two new variables called random num and target we're going to randomize the seed which will create a random number every time we're going to set random num to a random float this will create a random position that will go around the invisible circle we're then going to set the target to the random spot on the circle we then set it to move to the target. In my world scene, I have a timer which will spawn enemies randomly. If you don't know how to do that, you can follow my other tutorial which will show you how to spawn enemies around the camera. If you press play, you can see that the enemies are kind of making a circle around the player and it's going to that position. But if we move around, it will not update. So this is happening because we're setting the target at the start and it's not changing it when the player is moving. So we just, all we have to do is we have to set that there and set the target and we can get rid of that. You can see it now follows the player around with the enemies surrounded in the circle. Now we make it so if it's reached the destination then it should attack us. So create the attack and hit state and for the attack we're going to make it so it moves towards the player and for the hit we're also going to make it move towards the player but you can play your attack animation. In my player I've created two area 2D nodes attract which will make it so when the enemies enter this they will go into the attack state and attack so if the enemies go into this area here they will automatically start hitting the player you want to make sure the radius is 10 times more than the one set here radius so we want to set this to 40 so that way this will actually be detected so when the enemy goes to here then they will be attracted and moved towards the player and when they hit inside here they will then attack the player. So create an attack timer and we're going to set the wait time to seconds and when the enemy has entered the attract body it will start this timer and when it's exited it will stop the timer and set the state to surround. If the enemy has entered the attack then it will set the state to hit which means it will pull out its sword and start attacking the player and if it's exited then it will go back to surround. So connect the attack timer timeout 
to the enemy script. And when it's finished, we want to set the state to attack. We also want to reference the attack timer here, so just hold control and you can drag it in and drop it here and it'll set a variable automatically. And you want to make sure this variable is the same as this one. Here it says if body is in group enemy, this is checking so it's actually an enemy. And to do that we need to go to our enemy here, go to nodes and we're going to add a group called enemy. To check that it's actually hitting, I'm going to write print hit. This enemy here will stay out here, wait for two seconds, and then come in just like that. You can then add animations, health to the enemies, and anything you want to create a convincing enemy AI for your games. If this has helped you in any way, then please subscribe, comment for more videos, and tell me what I should do next. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you later.